Hi. When people come to OpenTelemetry for the first time, they are often confused by a concept called context propagation. If you've never used distributed tracing before, context propagation might be new to you. So to help with some learning, I'm putting together a series of videos that explains this concept. We're going to go over an overview of context propagation and why it's useful, context, propagation, and finally, what makes context propagation an amazing platform for building any kind of cross-cutting concern? Let's get started. OK, so let's dive in. What is context propagation? To understand that, it's best to first understand the problem that it's trying to solve, which is basically distributed transactions. What's a distributed transaction? Well, imagine you've got a client trying to upload an image and a caption to a service. Well, the most basic version of this wouldn't be just one service, actually. It would be something like a reverse proxy, talking to an auth service, talking to scratch disk, talking to an application service, which is talking to cloud storage, and also talking to a data service that's also talking to a SQL database and a caching system. So even the most basic LAMP stacky version of this problem is eight services. So that's a lot of services. Basically, what I'm saying is every system is a distributed system when you're talking about the web. And in modern times, this has only gotten worse. Systems are becoming larger. They're more complicated. They're more heterogeneous. Uh, there isn't just a single monolith anymore where you can centralize discovery of all of this information. And even if you had a single monolith, it would still be horizontally scaled. And all of that makes reconstructing the chain of events involved in a particular transaction to be really difficult. What you need is some kind of context that you can attach to all of your logs, metrics, and any other data you're emitting out of your system so that you can observe it. If you don't have context, you can't identify which events are part of which transactions. Like, seriously, how do you do this right now? When you're looking at your logs and you want just the logs for a single transaction, when that transaction has spanned, say, five services, and each one of those services is running on, like, 50 servers, how do you find just the logs for that one transaction? Like, seriously, what do you do? It's annoying. And the answer is a trace ID. If you have a trace ID, then you have an ID that's attached to every single event in the transaction. And that is critical. If you have a trace ID, then if you find one log, you can look up that trace ID on that log and find all the other logs in that transaction. Likewise, if you're looking at, say, a metrics dashboard, and you're looking at these events in aggregate, and you see a spike in the dashboard, you want to know what transactions were causing that spike. Let's say you're looking at 500 errors. Well, what 500 errors? You want to see what events led to that metric being emitted. Right now, generally speaking, that's sort of divided up across a bunch of different tools. You go look at your metrics dashboard, and then you make a guess, and then you go into your logging tool, and you kind of hunt around. So what you need is a way to actually bring all of this data together with indices that are attached to obser observations across all of these different types of signals. And that is what you get out of OpenTelemetry. And the way OpenTelemetry gives you that information is through context propagation. So... What is context propagation, and how does it work? It's actually pretty simple, conceptually speaking, though I'll admit, kind of annoying to build. Let's imagine you have two services, green and blue, and there's a set of operations that occur in green that lead to a network call triggering a set of operations in blue. Well, how do you follow this transaction and attach a trace ID to it. There's two parts. One, within a process, you have something called a context object. 
This is basically just a dictionary or a bag of keys and values that follows along the path of execution. So as you go from function to function and library to library, this bag follows along in the background. And you can access it at any time, put stuff into it, and pull stuff out of it. So that's where you store your trace IDs and things of that nature within your process in a context object. The next bit is this network call. How does that work? To send a context object over a network call, you have to serialize it and turn it into a set of headers. We call that propagation. Basically, on the client side, you inject the context by taking it and turning it into strings that are keys and values that are represented as, say, headers on your HTTP call. And then on the server side, you extract those keys and values from the headers and you turn them back into a context object, which can then follow along the path of execution. And you can continue this on down the stack. If blue talks to yellow and so on and so forth, you just keep serializing that context up, injecting it into the headers, extracting it on the other side, so on and so forth. This allows you to take something like a trace ID and send it along and attach it to every single log or metric that you happen to emit along the way. So in short, context objects follow the path of code execution within your service. Propagation attaches context to network calls and sends it from service to service. That's all you need to know, but there is one more little bit that involves configuration. What headers are you using for propagation? Unfortunately, there are a bunch of options, which honestly really sucks. Uh, there's the new W3C trace context headers. These are the official headers that are now part of the HTTP standard, so that's great. But there's also the Zipkin B3 headers, which are sort of a de facto standard that's been around for a while. There's also a whole slew of custom and proprietary headers uh, I'll note one, the AWS X-Ray headers, the X-Amazon header, that's one. But there's a bunch of proprietary things. Lightstep used to have its own headers, so on and so forth. This is a bummer because systems will break if the client serializes one set of headers and the server is expecting a different set of headers. So what do you do there? Well... Check what your services are actually using. If they're using OpenTelemetry by default, that will be trace context. So if you're starting from scratch, use trace context. This is the new standard, so just use that. It's got some advantages to the other ones. We won't get into that right now. If you already have some kind of tracing deployed and that's using B3 headers, then you should use B3 headers. That'll ensure that your new services, when they're deployed, talk to the existing services. There's nothing wrong with B3, so it's fine to use it. There's only one final gotcha, which is AWS Lambda. I just want to call this out. If you happen to be running serverless on Lambda, that currently only supports the Amazon X-Ray headers. Uh, the Lambda clients uh, automatically use those X-ray headers, but if you're deploying services on Lambda, just know that you have to use those headers. That's just a gotcha that people can fall into. But basically, use the trace context headers. And that is that. Okay, so we've covered context propagation basics, what it is and why it's useful. In the next set of videos, we'll be diving into the individual APIs, how to use them, and how to build interesting stuff on top of them. If you're interested in that, consider subscribing so you'll get a notification for when those videos come out. Also, if you liked this and found it helpful, please like the video or leave a comment. That's the only way I know that you found it interesting. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.